Hi everybody, this is Nicholas Rodino with Sound Nerds Unite, and this is another daily coordination where I walk you through my uh, wireless frequency coordination, hoping that my workflow may help others with theirs. So today um, we are in at the Foxwoods Resort and Casino in Connecticut. So in case you haven't used uh, Wireless Workbench before, or if you've never seen any of these videos, Wireless Workbench is a free product by Sure that allows you to uh, coordinate multiple frequencies for your wireless microphones and in-ear monitors and wireless inputs, guitars and such. If you need more um, in-depth view of Wireless Workbench, I have some other videos and of course Sure has their own and there's many others by other people that um, are out there to help you kind of navigate how to work around the program. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how I do things on a daily basis and maybe it'll help you. So um, what I always do is I start with uh, a file from the show before. Um, so last night we were in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. So today we're at the Foxwood Resort and Casino in Connecticut. So what we're going to do is I will do a save as from the file before. And usually what I do is I will add it as um, Date, which I have no idea today is the 13th, 12, 13, 19, and we're at the Foxwoods, and we're in Connecticut. Cool. So the reason why I start with a file from the night before is that it just has everything already in there as far as um, my inventory and such. It just makes it easier on a daily basis than creating a new file from scratch. So first things first is I will um, go ahead and start doing some scans. So uh, Wireless Workbench has three tabs, just a quick review. Inventory is the actual hardware units that you have. Frequency coordination are the frequencies that are assigned to those hardware units. And then the monitor tab is simply to look at units um, easily at once on a computer screen. So what we're going to do, and, and also, I'm sorry, um, this window here is uh, your spectrum, your RF spectrum. So basically we're allowed to use 470 to 608 or so. That's the frequency range. Um, so that's what we're going to be working with. This is what it shows you. You can navigate this window using um, things over here. You can also, if you're on a Mac, two fingers up and down will get you zoomed in and out. And the left and right arrows will be able to pan left and right within the spectrum window. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab some uh, current data from the RF environment here. So I'm just going to delete this data from the window. I like doing this better than restarting it because it just makes more sense to me. I'm also going to remove the data from the ear import. So I will do click on this little gear icon. As long as your units are uh, networked, and once again, sure, Wireless Workbench only works with um, sure units as far as the networkability of it, but it will coordinate for nearly every manufacturer and brand Which makes it really convenient. So we're going to go ahead and just choose um, all of my different types of and bands of Gear here even though the Axion G57 band covers the entire spectrum we're working in Almost um, I still want to get data from the actual units what they're actually seeing I have some older units in here some L3s that need to go away they're way up there. There's also an H4 and there is a QLXD, or ULXD. So I've selected one unit of all of those and I'm going to start the scan. So as you see up here, it's starting to scan. And then I'll also go over here in the spectrum and I will enter in. I will enter in the TV channel. It's really important here when you're reusing a file to uncheck that. And I also uncheck that. I want to see exactly what the environment is like. So we're going to go ahead and uh, enter this in, search for TV channels. So what I'll do is I'll just, just kind of scroll through here and look in general what the environment looks like. Um, a lot of the times I'm looking at the distance number. Usually something that's 40 plus miles away may not show up in your scan, but it's just interesting to see what you have. Um, and one quirk, I don't know if it's something I'm just doing wrong or not, but if I had selected my own um, excluded channel, like 20. When you run a new scan, um, even if you unselect these things, it'll still save those channels, which I guess is okay, but when you're working in a different city every 20 hours or whatever, um, it's a little bit different. So just make sure there's nothing user selected that's still selected. We'll save that. And also do a hardware import from an IEM receiver. So 
on this gate we have PSM 1000s. So I'm going to take one of those packs, and if you navigate to the radio menu, there'll be something that says full scan. What we're going to do is we're going to do that. So the pack is receiving um, or scanning the environment, and then we're going to import that scan data into the transmitter for the PSM 1000, and then use wireless workbench to import that data into our program. And remember, once again, what Wireless Workbench is doing is it is you're giving it data of the environment, calculate frequencies that are compatible with one another based on the capabilities of the hardware units. And I want you to take into account all the scan data and TV channels, etc. This red line here, the exclusion threshold, which is over here, negative 85. I don't, I rarely, rarely change that. So leave that where it is, um, unless you know what you're doing. Basically, the program is saying, if there's anything that's above that red line, do not coordinate a frequency over it. What you're seeing now, these little white things, this is just uh, frequencies that are already here from the night before, so we're going to change all of that. But basically, anything above that red line, it's not going to calculate something for it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a scan, and I'll be right back. So what I've done is I've imported, um, I've scanned using a PSM 1000 pack and I have gone to the transmitter for the PSM 1000 and if you hit sync and spectrum and sync scan and use the IR from the pack you can import that data from the pack into the unit and then we'll import that data into wireless workbench. So what we're looking at right now if you toggle things on and off you can see the scan data from each unit. So what I'll do first things first is because of the current state in the RF landscape with Repack and 5G and all of that, even though the TV channel search is as accurate as it can be, it's hard to keep it 100% accurate right now. So it's important to look through the scan data and see if you see any things that look like TV channels that have not come up. We got really lucky today. This environment is super quiet for RF, so this is going to be an easy day, knock on wood. Um, if you see these little red uh, columns here, that denote to TV channels, and once again, a TV channel, that DTV channel number corresponds to what the TV channel is um, legally able to operate on. It's not the vanity call sign of the channel, so if you see like whatever, your city might be channel 9. Channel 9 might not be Channel 9. Channel 9 might be Channel 24. Um, so keep that in mind. So that's what this corresponds to. So Channel 26 is Channel 26 right there. This is a good indication that that is a TV channel that has enough energy that it should not be coordinated over. Um, a lot of these other, other channels are either offline and move to a different repack. I'm not going to be concerned with that today much. Or it's just so far away that it's not even showing up in our scans. Um, these things could be a lot, who knows, that could be an in-house RF unit that's been left on. These things are just, they could be lots of things. But once again, when we coordinate, we'll figure that out. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is that when we're doing our scans, always make sure that your in-ear in -ear transmitters are off or the uh, antenna is off. You don't want those to be picked up in your scans. All right, cool. So what I'll do is hit this number. I'll expand all of this. If you notice, everything's locked currently, which means the frequencies are locked. The compatible frequencies are locked. I'm going to unlock that, and then I'm going to calculate. And what we're looking for here is this magic number. However frequencies you have, you want to have 100%, you know, 46 over 46. So what I'll do real quick is I'll just scroll through here and see if there's see if there's anything that doesn't look good. Like this right here, eh, let's just calculate again, the whole thing. Don't be afraid to calculate multiple times. Yeah, in general, this looks fine. I mean, it's a super easy day. It's super quiet. This is not a challenging day at all, but it's nice to have one of those every once in a while. <laughs> so the next step is to check this box and hit Analyze. That's going to analyze and make sure there's no conflicts. If there were conflicts, it would be in red. You can click on the, the red number and it would show you what those frequencies, what those conflicts are. And in other videos, um, we can go through what happens when that does happen, but today it's just an easy thing. We're doing this in real time. So I'm cool with that. I'll, I'll, I'll save it, and then I'll lock the frequencies. Save it. 
And then in my case, everything is um, networked. So hitting assign and deploy will then deploy all these frequencies to the R all the hardware units. And it's important, even though I'm just doing a screen share right now, the important thing is uh, in the real world is you want to look at the receivers for your microphones and guitars and instruments and such and make sure there's no RF activity on the meters. Uh, I do the same thing with the IMs. So I'll take one of the packs and I'll load it up in engineer mode or Q mode with all of the frequencies. And then with the antennas off, go out to the deck and scroll through those mixes looking at the screen and making sure there's no RF activity on the screen. And that's it. So in general, that's how I do a coordination every day. I hope that's helpful to you. There's more resources on the website, soundnerdsunite.org. Feel free to put some comments below. I try to answer all of those when, when I can. If I can help you with any other uh, challenges you have with wireless stuff, feel free to or reach out to me. All right, thanks a lot.